Hi, my name is Ingrid Abaydasla. I am the host of Turkish Philanthropy Forum's Voices of Partners. Um, it's exciting to welcome you to another session with one of TPF's amazing partners working in Turkey. And today we are going to be talking to Öğretmen Akademisi Vakfı, which is the Teachers Academy Foundation. And it is the first and only NGO in Turkey focusing on the personal and professional development of teachers. And we've got a great group of people joining us um, today, this afternoon, this evening, depending on where you are. I'm coming to you from a very sunny and beautiful New York City. Um, and we are being joined by um, Arzu Atasoy, who um, is an English teacher. Um, and she uh, started teaching in the 1990s. I'm not going to give exact dates because we don't want to. We don't want to let people know how old we are. I've I've learned this as I've gotten older. Um, I tell people I grew up in the 1970s and 80s, and it startles people. Um, she taught English and held um, the role of um, department head in, for the English department in two of the best schools in Turkey for 12 years. Um, but then her passion to learn and share led her to join the um, Teachers Academy Foundation in 2009. And since then, she's been a team member um, at the Teachers Academy in various roles. Um, and for the past six years, she's been the education director. So Arzu, welcome. Um, we are also joined by Berna Koklu, um, yeah. who has been an English language teacher and tutor since um, 2000. It's okay to say that because you're you're younger than us. So that's <laughs> okay. we can we can date you. That's okay. Um, and she's been working um, as a teacher, and from 2012 to 2013, she worked as an assistant manager in in a government school. And she participated in the Teachers Academy training program and is currently working to be a trainer to other teachers. Yep. Um, and she's been working as a part-time tutor with Teachers Academy since 2010. So Berna, welcome. Thank you. Um, and we are joined by Jaehun Gyojan Olu. Did I get that right? Perfect. Yes, yes. great. <laughs> it's very important to get people's names right. That's my public service announcement for everybody. Um, people's names matter. Um, uh, Jaehun works as a communications and CSR country director for IBM Turkey, um, and he is a longtime donor to the Teachers Academy, and he received the Chivening Scholarship. Did I say that correctly? It's Chivening. It's a Chivening Scholarship from the uh, Foreign oh. Commonwealth Office of the British Government. Oh. Attended and attended Beer Quebec College in London. That's British okay. English, that's why I can't say it. Um, they speak English weird. Um, uh, for his master's in corporate social responsibility and he has a PhD um, from the Faculty of Communications at Marmara University. So we've got a great group and I wanna dive into the work that the Teachers Academy does. So I'd love to turn to Arzu and Berna, if you could um, tell our viewers who are tuning in um, about the mission of the Teachers Academy and what what makes what makes it unique. Arzuna, maybe we can start with you. Yes. Uh, well, thank you very much for hosting us, and uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning to our viewers wherever they are. Uh, here in Istanbul, it's the evening, about half past eight. So. Uh, we're almost end, at the end of the day, but very delighted to be here all with you. Um, Teachers Academy Foundation was founded um, in 2008 uh, by a group of bankers and visionary NGO people for the purpose of uh, supporting teachers' professional and personal development. Uh, it began as a first, first as a project, as a social responsibility project. Our story was like a social responsibility project, but then uh, when we saw the demand from the teachers and the satisfaction of uh, services, our services, then the organization became a, a foundation. And since then, uh, uh, the first project was uh, called No Limit to Teacher, and we uh, aimed at uh, reaching 100,000 teachers in five years and uh, providing them a training program called Learning Leadership, uh, Teachers Learning Leadership. Uh, so we traveled all around the country, 
with our suitcases one on one shoulder there was these you know projection machines uh, which we didn't have at schools then and uh, on the other shoulder we had our suitcases and and like penguins uh, we were traveling all around the country uh, to provide this service to, to our uh, colleagues and uh, after five years uh, when the project ended uh, the, the foundation continued its efforts and uh, today we have uh, then we had uh, one program but we now have uh, 15 different programs, one to 15 days uh, long, uh, and uh, we provide services, training programs and other uh, um, activities for teachers and uh, school principals in 15 different programs. But, uh, until the pandemic, we had uh, all face-to-face -face programs. We were going to their schools in their school premises, designing the classroom, uh, um, like however we want them to practice their classroom applications. But then after the pandemic, we went completely online. And maybe after Berna, I can uh, uh, explain how we do it online. Great, Berna. Okay, thank you. I am appreciated for this opportunity to speak up for the organization as a participant and an instructor. Uh, as a teacher, I've been trying to teach uh, what I know. Uh, with the methods and approaches and I've so been uh, I've been learning throughout these years and for myself improvement of course and learning is a continuous um, never-ending process actually and it has been 21 years in this job and I have had several trainings since then and it is fair to say um, Arav's training is the most beneficial one because it is applicable in every grade in the country. And it is entertaining because there are lots of games and activities, up-to-date games and activities actually. And it is um, refreshing because sometimes things and knowledge can be lost during the way and uh, you can get lost actually. And um, I can say, I get excited, sorry. Um, I can say that it is fair to say that it is uh, solution oriented because uh, what we do uh, in the class is challenging with there there are lots of challenges in the class and we always uh, try to find solutions for the shape it's solution oriented so it's really helpful and it's a guidance for the management class management and uh, we can say that uh, there are lots of academic uh, resource we they use academic resources for this uh, tr trainings. And as a, um, I had then, I have in 2010, I have become an instructor and a uh, volunteer one, of course. And it is, it's an honor to vol volunteer for this organization because uh, they support teachers, what they need along the years. And as an instructor, I have seen eager faces, happy faces, e happy eager faces uh, because they, um, they are willing to do what they want, what they've learned, what they've, uh, well, how can I say, what they do um, in the training, sorry. Um, they are willing to use whatever they learned on Monday and start their uh, teaching process as if, as if they are new one, as if they are, um, um rookie actually and um, sorry um right now i can all can say is i get excited and <laughs> forgot what i wanted to no say it is then. it's so exciting sorry. Um, i think the work that um the teachers academy is doing is so exciting and you talked about the challenges um the teachers have and i'm i'm a teacher and i know that mm -hmm. you know getting up in front of a class and um, you know, trying to teach, especially I think in the past year, trying to teach over Zoom has been very challenging. Um, yeah, as well, Arza Hulum, you mentioned um, all of your trainings were in, in person. Um, can you tell us what has happened in the past year? I mean, I, I imagine you've gone virtual and how has that gone? Yes, uh, well, like all the other teachers in the world, we were shocked. Uh, we were like, we had no tools to do. We had nothing to do, but then um, teachers are, are, you know, in, in everywhere in the world and also in our country are the leaders of every society. This is uh, something I believe sincerely. 
because they carried uh, all over the load of both psychological load of the society and also the kids' uh, concerns. Uh, they were like trying to uh, protect themselves, uh, their health, their beloved ones, but they were also trying to connect, still keep the connection with the students. That was our, the, our teachers' uh, biggest concern in Turkey. Uh, and then they managed to learn some tools like Zoom to, to contact with students. Some of them couldn't, uh, like in many uh, disadvantaged places, uh, because kids had no technological uh, tools to con contact with their teachers. Sometimes they had to print, down, uh, print, print out things and deliver them to their parents. Sometimes they had to do WhatsApp calls or they had to send WhatsApp messages to their students. But they were in a, in a really um, position where a recovery or, or an emergency uh, intervention was required. Uh, because they, they had nothing to do. They didn't know what to do and they were helpless. So we, we tried to help teachers to, to tell them that we are with them in, in two ways. First, we had the needs analysis uh, research. So we asked them what they needed at that moment. While the results of, the, of that research was uh, being analyzed, we contacted each uh, district uh, leadership of the, of the Ministry of Education, what that specific city uh, needed in terms of teachers' uh, needs. So they came up uh, with some uh, requirements and they demanded some training programs. We're, so we started with a series of webinars. Uh, we have an online platform called eCampus, which we had you know, uh, set up in 2010, but wasn't uh, being uh, used uh, well because of teachers' lack of uh, digital literacy then. But in 2018, we had renewed that platform with, with, a, with a, a donor's support. So we were somehow uh, much uh, you know, better than the other maybe uh, very small organizations. Uh, we were readier in terms of infrastructure. But um, while we were preparing the training programs according to the needs analysis, we also uh, justly supported teachers with our webinars. Like there were 39 different uh, we, we organized 50 different webinars on 39 different topics uh, in that uh, term, like in March and uh, end of June. And afterwards we continued because there is still demand on those webinars. Uh, we called the Teachers with No Limits uh, as, a, as a project name. And it's still going on with 81 different provinces. We're going to continue that until a, a, a September uh, 2021. So it will be like 24,000 teachers uh, uh, reaching. Uh, we, we will be reaching out uh, 24,000 teachers with only webinars. Besides that, we have training programs like six days programs, uh, blended programs. Like some of the days are asynchronous while teachers uh, work on their own. Some of them are uh, online classes altogether. Teachers individually apply to our program through the Ministry of Education's website, because we have a protocol with the Ministry of Education. Uh, they apply from that site. Uh, they take the training, uh, participate in the training from our site. And uh, that data goes back to the Ministry of Education and they get certified. So this is how the system works now. And by the end of this year, we hope to, if we can you know, uh, get our donors support, uh, we hope to reach more, uh, more than 30,000 teachers this year. Uh, until last year, until the digital uh, obligation time, let's say, uh, until the pandem pandemic, uh, we were able to access approximately 11,000 teachers a year. But now it, it tripled up with the help of technology. And this gives, this empowers teachers. This also provides uh, equality of opportunity because we were able to do um, our trainings in schools altogether but some teachers couldn't persuade their colleagues to invite us to their schools. So we, were, we are now uh, able to provide our training programs to uh, even the teachers in the very small village uh, where there's only one or two teachers. So that's a huge uh, access uh, opportunity, which we are proud of. And we, we besides all these you know, professional things that we support teachers with, we made them feel that they are not alone. They are not alone, they are supported. There is, there is a group of people who are dedicated to uh, increase their uh, you know, 
strength and 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 their capacity to to uh, have their uh, profession do their profession in the best ways so we are always uh, in a in a collegial support mood uh, where we can uplift each other that's great um, and you mentioned support, and I'd love to bring um, Jaehyun Bae, you into the conversation because you are a supporter of the Teachers Academy. Um, could you talk about how you came across um, the organization and how you began to support it? Well, actually, uh, of course, I'm a supporter, but through my uh, corporation, IBM. Uh, so I'm not, uh, of course, I do from time to time the individual don donations, but I think now it's more about um, as the organizational level. And uh, having said that, I also need to emphasize that in my uh, mother's family, my grandmother uh, used to be a primary uh, school teacher. My two aunts, they were in a high school teacher and my mother was also a kindergarten um, uh, teacher uh, in, in her beginning of her career. So actually I, raised, I was raised up in a family with all teachers. So it is no surprise that when I uh, joined the professional life, I started working in different companies and organizations focusing on education and skills. And for IBM, education and skills is, uh, is one of the leading uh, programs that we run in our uh, CSR programs uh, across the globe. Uh, and to make our impact uh, furthermore, of course, we focus uh, uh, to teachers uh, because we believe uh, with teachers, there's a more multiplier effect. It's more sustainable. It's more uh, possible to grow. The impact is, 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 is more because, I mean, we, we can provide good education material, but we are not trainers. We are not face-to-face -face working directly with students. Uh, so it's better for us to empower teachers, uh, their professional life and their, their um, you know, even personal uh, engagements so that they actually uh, provide better uh, services to children and, you know, uh, train them in a better and a quality way. So um, looking from that, uh, from that angle, of course, uh, ERA uh, stands out alone, um, a, a great example organization um, for, because they, in Turkey, some of organizations focus on teacher well-being and you know, education, uh, but they don't, they don't really touch, uh, they don't have any program that touches uh, you know, um, uh, teachers. And while some others are focusing on you know, the teacher, they are not really focusing on uh, the needs of the teacher, but uh, from a top-down approach, oh, you know, teacher would need this and let's give this. So uh, from what I have observed from Aram and while working with them and even trying to convince uh, them to, you know, partner us in different projects, you know, they look at if they could really make impact uh, on, on, this, on the field um, in the right way as, as needed by teachers or requested by teachers or where teachers should be at, at, at different uh, of, uh, points of level. So. Um, in, in this long partnerships that IBM and Erav had, and I was speaking to uh, one of our colleagues at Erav a couple of years back, and it was like every year we did something, you know, whether it was like donation, whether it's a partnership, whether it's in, in kind, every year we had one activity, whether we were supporting a teacher festival, uh, it was in, I don't recall the exact date, but maybe in 2017, and afterwards we had organized a, a pro bono consultancy, uh, to look at uh, the, the technology and digital, digital um, background of uh, ERAO and how we could improve that, how they could improve that. So we provided them a strategic roadmap. Again, working with teachers and we did like design thinking workshops. If uh, I don't know if the audience is similar to that, but during the, that, that design thing, we'll look at uh, the teacher's needs, um, uh, what they really want, what they really say, what they really thought, uh, think, uh, and what they, you know, are having problems and how ERAO could, you know, provide solutions within their uh, platform. So that was one of the other things that we have done. We did a campaign for teachers and how to improve their STEM, skill, science, uh, technology, engineering, and math skills to, to uh, and share that knowledge among their peers. So that was a campaign actually focusing on teachers um, and after that, uh, now actually I'm um, uh, supporting one of the IBM's program called Open PTEC, where we are actually focusing on skills and professional development of uh, youngsters uh, and get them, get them ready to jobs. But at the same time, and I refer to my first part where I, IBM is focusing on teachers, we always work with teachers. While we have this uh, platform for students, we also have um, a backdoor for teachers so that we are also providing, you know, content and, and platforms for those uh, teachers. While now we will be cooperating with Arab in communicating and, you know, make sure that that goes to other um, uh, 
uh, teachers in the in in the in the way. So, um, so in a nutshell, you know how uh, and why we focus uh, and work with Aravis has two pillars. One, of course, educational skills, bit piece, um, and really focusing on teachers because we really see the impact could be managed by uh, teachers uh, because it's them who are really uh, working with students in need um, and improve the education quality. And from my experience with ERAV and with other organizations in the field, when you have a teacher that is empowered, that is you know, energetic, that who is you know, uh, skillful, he or she can make many changes in the school uh, more than you know, in, any funds that you could provide to that school. Uh, so I think the, the change starts with the teachers and empowered uh, teachers actually really make a big difference, uh, not only in their class, but in their schools and, and further in, their, in the future, uh, in the whole uh, education ecosystem. So for our viewers, um, I, mean, I, I want to emphasize what, what Jacob Bay is saying is that, you know, this is an organization where you're not just donating, but you're investing in teachers and it has the multiplier effect where you're not just buying resources, pencils, paper, um, equipment for a classroom, but you're actually investing in um, human capital and in not only the teacher, but then it also has the multiplier effect for, for the students. Because I think just as Jamin Bay said, um, an empowered teacher, a teacher who has the solutions, Baron Hanum talked about how um, Orav um, provide solutions to many problems um, really is fundamentally important because you really can't replace, um, even though we come here virtually, you can't replace a human teacher with, with technology. Um, Bernam, I'd love to bring you back into this um, conversation. Um, you talked about um, the challenges that teachers face, and I'd love to hear a little bit more because I can imagine the challenges are many in Turkey. Um, yeah, for, cool. for teachers. And um, what are some of the challenges that teachers in Turkey face and how, how has ORAV helped to, to address some of those challenges? Yeah, of course. Um, actual challenges are uh, different and uh, varies with the cities and the conditions, family conditions and lives they are facing, the, the facts they are facing with. And sometimes it is... Um, not having enough uh, opportunities to go to school or to need to work for the lives. And uh, Arab is there for the, for the teachers who are trying their best to help the guide them, to build relationships actually, to communicate with them, to not to just the rules, this is A plus B equals C, not is, not, that's not that, at, uh, not the teachers what they do. They, touch the students with the relations that they built. They trying to uh, make them open up themselves to the teachers and help them along the way while communicating with them. And um, challenges and their, um, how can we say, um, they yeah, find their ways as to do a, it. As a, as a teacher, as a teacher, what difficulties did you have as a teacher? Uh, as a of, teacher, of a state school yeah you know were your were your students be able to come to school when the school opened or could they access technology uh, or online classes do did all your students come to all your classes mm -hmm. yeah actually if we can uh, if we want to talk about that that and there are lots of students who cannot uh, have technology at their homes or wi-fi system or modems and it is really hard for them to reach by and but the government can provide schools try to provide but it, it, take, it took some time to get over there and uh, there are family issues in the houses lots of lots of family issues during these ways during the pandemic actually and these uh, family issues uh, there are some shoutings in the house and you are trying to teach and try students are trying to understand and listen to you and trying to wait but it is not always teaching but it's touching the students trying to understand and smiling to them although what you know what's going on in this class and it is challenging and later on you try to avoid things and smile to them and try to connect with them and get over the problems they are trying to face 
there are lots of uh, divorced families during the pandemic and uh, lots of um, people with the needs who lost uh, the parents lost their jobs and cannot find any um, source to go on with their lives so it is really it was really hard and um, as far as I can tell uh, the teachers who had trainings with ERA or who are facing the problems they know how to connect with them actually how to talk to them how to reach them how to make them together with the other students in the class how to become one and go on and uh, face the struggles but keep going as a student or any other thing great thank you um arza Hanum, when um you've been with with oraf pretty much since since the beginning of, of the organization. How have you seen the organization evolve and the, and the impact that it's had um, in Turkey? Well, when we first began, there were no other examples like us. And the, the standard professional development was like someone going onto the stage, speaking for an hour in, in, in front of like 300 people. And that was called the training program or a training. So what we uh, in, introduced to the country was uh, like a workshop model, really hands-on, activity-based, adult learning methodologies. So teachers were first uh, very uh, you know, uh, suspicious about it. You know, we asked them to get out of the, you know, get out to the schoolyard and, and play, uh, just as we want them to play with kids or play with DAOs in the class and creating some uh, models of, of, of objects uh, in an activity, for example, or play, play with, with table tennis balls. So that was, that was quite surprising for them. And, and then for first they said, why do we need this? You know, we don't need it. But then the more we went, the more teachers we, we got to know, the more teachers uh, experienced how they benefited from the program, uh, the word spread out and, and we, we didn't have a budget for, for advertising, you know, that then there was no social media and, you know, only word of mouth advertising was possible. Uh, and some very visionary school principals or teachers who, who want their school to be a part of this uh, program uh, initiated their uh, schools and uh, colleagues. But then after they saw the benefits, when their students said, what happened at the weekend to you, sir? Because you, dif you act totally differently from Friday. So what happened, as, and, and maybe it's not normal to say here, but has any rock uh, you know, fall onto, fallen onto your head at the weekend, teacher? Was the question uh, asked to the teachers. So they said, students are surprised to see us this way. Uh, parents are coming and saying, what, what have you done uh, to, to my child? So they saw the effects and the word spread out. And um, we haven't done the research about it, but until the, uh, you know, until 100,000 teachers, this uh, went on like this. But then the effect, the effect, the impact uh, got bigger. The Ministry of Education uh, was, uh, you know, asked to do the, its trainings like we do. So they say, if you're going to do uh, in-service training, do it like Teachers Academy Foundation, because it is worth wasting, you know, taking your time, uh, spending your time at the weekend or, or the evening, and, and this is worth it. Uh, so that demand affected the Ministry of Education's policies, luckily. Uh, so now uh, the Ministry of Education is also organizing their trainings in workshop model, in small groups, hands-on activities more, uh, so uh, we, we actually introduced a, a different approach to the country and we reminded teachers that they are valuable. Uh, the reputation of the profession is, 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 is valuable. So they're more proud to become a teacher. And the thing is, uh, when, if, if you want to talk to our donors in a, in a sense, uh, usually donors uh, uh, donate to uh, causes that have immediate results. Like people prefer to donate money to a, to a hungry kid to make to buy lunch to a hungry kid or to support an ill person uh, that because that gives us the feeling of immediate relief and feeling that saying, OK, I helped somebody. 
because it's a quick result. But in education, it's like it's like drops of water into a into a well. Uh, we need consistency. We need vision uh, because uh, even a one one uh, percent of uh, increase in GDP because of education quality in a country affects thirty more years, uh, and it gets bigger. So uh, when we invest in a child, even if we don't see that, or in a teacher. Uh, when we invest in a teacher, we don't see the results now. Uh, maybe that's the, that's the maybe point we, we need to explain to our donors. Yes, you don't see the results now. Uh, you may not say, yay, I, I, I supported, the, you know, I made a child uh, hungry, a child is sleeping full with a full stomach tonight. We are investing for the future and we will see its result in a couple of years. Because even if you, you know, uh, set up a school, uh, you see the results in five years. So that's... But Orab has had results. I mean, you just talked about yes. um, how the Turkish education ministry is now um, doing a different type of training, yes. Um, yes. which goes to show you that education really does matter and that if you want to see change, that it is really critical on how you are going out there and you are providing information and education to people. And I think that you're right. Um, for, for those of you who are um, tuning in, um, this is more than just about getting a donation. This is really about investing in an entire ecosystem and investing in generations and in the future of Turkey, which is what Turkish Philanthropies um, Funds is really all about. Um, this is an organization um, that was really set up um, with a vision for the future. And so um, I think the things that you point out are, um, are really very important for everyone to really know that the money that you put in today into Orav will really help um, and go further um, in, in Turkey in, in the long run. And so um, you can, um, for those of you viewing in, you can um, donate to Orav, which is the Öretmen Öretmenler Akademi Vakfı, I think that's right. Um, Öğretmen uh, Akademisi Vakfı. Oh. <laughs> Jacob's not impressed. <laughs> okay. You you got my heart by by saying my surname, which is even hard for Turkish people. So it's all good. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you can go onto TPF's um, homepage and you can find Orab and um, you can make a donation. Um, we really encourage everyone to do that. Um, um, and as kind of, since this is really um, focused in on educating our donors, um, um, Jason Bay, can you also make an appeal to our, um, our viewers and, and the people who are within the Turkish Philanthropy for, uh, Funds um, community about, about contributing and being a part of this movement that, um, that Orav is about? Well, actually, uh, from from where I stand, um, whenever I have a chance to work with uh, Eral, um, it has been very fruitful uh, in terms of uh, the engagements that uh, you know we received um, through uh, Eral, because we are also looking um, and trying to find ways to reach out to teachers, um, and uh, and and of course, in that scale, uh, we look at first the number of. Um, teachers that you know we could reach out and then how they utilize in general uh, tools that we provide for teachers um, so in, in that scale um, one, in, one of the things that we have done as I said earlier about like open PTEC platform I, I could you know easily tell that uh, the partnership with Eral we have on, on social media uh, has the uh, highest uh, number of you know participants joining to our platforms uh, and we can you know look at uh, it by the, the numbers um, so, so I think that's one of the other, you know, part of the effect that, you know, we, uh, we, we, we achieve with Earl, uh, but more importantly, as I, as I said, again, like the experience that I have with like working with schools and I, I go to schools and, you know, even when I speak to teachers, they said, Oh, how do you know the system? How do you speak of this language that you speak? Because, you know, it feels like you are one of us. Um, and from that experience, I, I can really tell you that, you know, when we have a teacher that has been connected with Earl. Um, and their programs, I could really see, uh, you know, the difference that they make in the school, and it's easier to work with them as well. So actually, uh, it's not uh, the professional part that you know the teachers or or the or, or the personal development part that teachers are getting. They could be also able to utilize it for other 
um, you know, uh, resources that they can ga gain from other parts because it's not only about, you know, individual or, or corporate uh, donations, but about, you know, the community, you know, where, where they are. So um, it, it is like, um, it's bigger than a seed, uh, I must say, uh, but then that tree also puts uh, its seeds across itself and then make it bigger. So I think um, uh, the partnership that uh, we have with, with uh, Arab is actually helping IBM on that level as well, on, on providing um, you know, uh, new doors and enable us to work on the field uh, with a better access even at that moment in that particular project, we are not working with Arrow, but we could see that it's uh, if it is their uh, ecosystem, it's much an easier um, playing for, field uh, for us. So, um, so I, I think it's about you know looking um, at our relationship with 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 Arrow in particular. Uh, they are there whenever we need we need them, and those uh, uh, the, uh, the relationship that we have with Arab and with through uh, the teachers through Arab is, has been always uh, impactful about what we want to achieve and how you know we deliver it because it's not always about quality uh, quantity but also um, the, the quality uh, in the, in the long term. So. Right. I hope I could be able to answer your question. Yeah. No. I mean, I think that's super helpful um, for um, for our viewers and the people who are within the TPF community. Um, and if you are watching this, um, all of you have had a teacher that impacted you. Um, and, and I certainly remember the teachers that impacted me. So definitely log on to um, TPF's website and donate to ORAV and the campaign that TPF and ORAV have running together um, so that a little boy or a girl in Turkey can have that same memory. Um, and in the long run, um, we can go towards um, helping Turkey in the way that we want to see Turkey progress um, and, and the next generation be even better um, and to go on and to innovate and do wonderful things like bringing us RNA vaccines that solve global pandemics. Um, uh, so with that, um, I wanted to, I want to thank um, Arzu, Berna, and Jehun for joining us um, and thank Orav um, for um, talking to Turkish Philanthropy Forums, the Voices of Partners. Um, we'll be back next month in, on July 14th talking to another, another one of our partners and I look forward to seeing you then. Until then, I'm Ingrid Abayrasla. Thanks for tuning in.